Today, we're going to take a look at a problem that I ran into in a discrete math class. A problem that beautifully illustrates how something seemingly complicated can be made simple through a reframing of the problem. And we're going to do so in a way that doesn't require any prior knowledge of discrete math. Just a bit of curiosity, logical thinking, and a few serendipitous intuitions. And I hope you walk away from this video not with some vague idea of how to solve this specific problem, but with a real intuition for a problem-solving technique that you may not have been aware of, one that you can use as a tool moving forward for the problems that you encounter elsewhere. We're going to take a look at an infinite puzzle, one with just three rules. The first rule is that we have a tiled checkerboard whose side lengths are two raised to some natural number power. Remember, the natural numbers are the counting numbers one, two, three, and so on, up to infinity. The smallest board fitting this description is then the 2x2 two two board. The next is a 4x4, four four, since 2 to the power 2 is 4. Then we have an 8x8, eight eight, since 8 is 2 to the power of 3. And this pattern continues indefinitely. Let's zoom back in a little. Rule 2 is that for a given board fitting Rule 1's description, a single gold tile is placed somewhere on the board. Rule 3 is that we, the solvers of this puzzle, are given as many L-shaped tiles as we want to help us solve the puzzle. Now for the question. For all of these boards, can we prove that there is a way we can arrange the tiles so as to cover the board completely? That bears repeating. No matter the power of two that we choose, we could get infinitely large. Is there some way to cover the board completely? I invite you to think about what we would need to do in order to solve this problem. For some of the smaller boards, we could simply take a brute force approach, fitting tiles in and perhaps rearranging them until we find a solution, or decide that there isn't one. But aside from being less than scientific, this approach is also not going to work at a certain point because of the sheer size of the boards. What if instead there was a technique that we could use to prove that all of these boards are or are not solvable in one fell swoop? It turns out there is, and it's called induction. Induction is a means of proving something by showing that if it is true of any particular case, it must be true of the next case in a series. Suppose we could show that if there is a solution for a certain board, there must be a solution for the next board in the sequence. That would actually be all we need to show to have full proof that all of the boards are solvable. Because if proving one somehow also proved the next, then by the same logic, the next would prove the one following it indefinitely. Forever. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's try this idea out on the simplest example. In looking at the 2x2 two two board, we see how trivial it is to solve. We just place an L-shaped tile in the leftover space. So we know that we can solve the puzzle for a 2x2 two two grid. More specifically, we know that if there is one tile already filled in, we can cover the rest. But we can use this fact to help us make sense of the 4x4 four four board. Notice that we can divide the 4x4 four four into quadrants, where each quadrant is in fact a 2x2. Two two. We can solve the 2x2 two two with the gold tile in it the same way that we did before. And notice that this leaves us with three more 2x2s. Two we know that we can solve each of these separately if only there was a way to fill them in each with just one tile. And there is. By placing an L-shaped tile in just the right way, we can put exactly one tile in each of the remaining 2x2s, two such that solving this board becomes trivial. We know that we can solve a 2x2 two two board if a gold tile is filled in somewhere, and we have used that fact, and that fact alone, to build the 4x4. Four four. But in doing so, we have also showed that we know how to build the 4x4 four four if a gold tile is filled in somewhere. Now let's take a look at the 8x8. Eight eight. Notice that we can again divide this board into quadrants, where each quadrant is a 4x4. Four four. We have just shown that we can fill in the 4x4 four four with the gold tile in it, no matter where the tile starts, because the 4x4 four four is really just a few 2x2s two put together. And now we have the exact same problem as before, three remaining boards that we know how to tile if we could just find a way to put one gold tile in each of them. Again, by placing an L-shaped tile in just the right way, we can put exactly one tile in each of the remaining boards. 
Since we have shown that we can solve a 4x4 board if there is one tile filled in, this problem again becomes trivial. Also notice that we have just shown that we also have the ability to completely cover an 8x8 board. Do you see where this pattern is going? What we have shown in discrete mathematical terms is that a solution to a 2 to the k by 2 to the k board implies the existence of a solution for a 2 to the k plus 1 by 2 to the k plus 1 board. And this information is enough to tell us that we can indeed tile any board whose side lengths are 2 raised to an integer power. By reframing this problem as the sum of smaller problems of the same type, we can transform a seemingly impossible task into an easy one. Defining a problem in this way is a technique in computer science called recursion, and it shows up again and again in problems ranging from gene sequencing, navigation system logic, and even superhuman chess engines. It's an incredibly powerful problem-solving approach that will help you solve many different kinds of problems, and it all relies on recognizing that a problem can be redefined as a few smaller problems of the exact same kind. So the next time that you're looking to understand something large and unwieldy, consider looking for an approach that allows you to define it as a function of smaller problems that are easier to understand. You just might find yourself conquering something infinite if you do. Thanks so much for watching.